So you guys have question one pulled up, right? All right, so make sure you're on the same page as me because um, uh, I'm going to go through every single thing, okay? Um, and I want to see what you answered, okay? How many of you do think that it helped you to highlight prior to reading? Be honest. Okay, those of you that don't, I assume you just, never mind. Okay, so what does the phrase, the flame that consumed him, emphasize? We have A, and I want you to raise your hand if you had A, the effect of water on nar Narcissus's health. That's an easy thing to say. The anger of the gods towards Narcissus. The in the intensity of Narcissus' emotions and the capacity Narcissus has for love, okay? Now, what I like about this is that when they release this, they explain things down here and tell you what exactly they were asking. This is a level two question, uh, so it's at the bottom. There's up, up to four on levels. Um, four would be like the essays that you do, okay? You'll see that as we go along. So this is all about figurative language, word relationship. Um, it's 8.5 and the correct answer was C and what I like about this as well if you missed it okay it actually explains to you why you missed it so I'm gonna leave this on here did anybody answer any of the other ones that we need to keep it on this page you thought it was a okay it says this is incorrect while the second portion of the sentence reveals what happens to Narcissus, the target phrase is not directly tied to the water or to Narcissus's health. So that's why that one's not right. So C is right because it says this flame is a metaphor for his obsession with his reflection. And like fire consume, consumes wood, it is consuming him. So this is what I like because it does actually give you the rationale for every single answer. So if you thought it was something and you don't want to tell me what it is, right now you can read why. And these are going to be exactly what you're going to see on the test. So this is what's nice about it. We can kind of look at these old tests and go, oh, this is what they mean when they ask this kind of question. Because the questions don't change. Okay. All right. Scrolling down to number two. We had... Um, which two qualities do these sentences reveal about Narcissus? So you had to select two. We know we're going to find it in passage one in paragraph one. Why, beautiful being, do you shun me? Surely my face is not one to repel you. The nymphs love me, and you yourself look not indifferent upon me. So which two qualities? Who had he is vain? He is nervous. He finds falling in love distressing. He can easily prove that he is a good person. He believes other people find him attractive. Now, you had to have two, and because if you look down here, points possible, the two have to be right to get a point. So it's either all right or all wrong. This is a level two, and this is um, eight. Point three, analyze how particular lines of a dialogue or incidences of a story or drama propel the action. Reveal aspects of a character. That reveals aspects of a character. So looking down here, here are your answers. You should have had that uh, A, what was it, a, the la first one and the last one. So Narcissus is literally in love with his own appearance and is confident in his beauty. And the last one, the nymphs love me, shows how Narcissus not only considers himself beautiful, but is accustomed to others having the same view that he does regarding his youth and beauty. So he's used to people thinking he is just so good looking. So if you had a different one, make sure you read the rationale for this. And those of you that are watching this video can pause if you need to. Okay. Next one. Oh, these are all like the different possibilities of what gets you a point or what you what doesn't. What you need to remember is that if you don't get the two that they say, you don't get a point. 
So that's all that it goes through every single thing. So question three. This is one point. It's a level two question, and it's points of view or perspectives perspectives of characters uh, and the audience or reader. So why is Dorian's mockery ironic? In paragraph two of passage two, it says, once in boyish mockery of Narcissus, he had kissed or feigned to kiss those painted lips that now smiled so cruelly at him. Who had A, he does not know that others find him unattractive. B, he does not understand how to show real affection. C, he does not realize how similar he and Narcissus are. Or D, he does not know how the painting will soon be discovered. Okay, it makes sense that uh, in irony, he doesn't realize how similar he and Narcissus are. So in irony, um, that's C. Okay, if you had a different one, make sure you read your rationale right now because it's important to know not only that you missed it, but why you missed it. Okay, so for C, Dorian is in love with himself and shows his infatuation with himself by longing to kiss his own lips, just as Narcissus was obsessed with himself. That's odd, isn't it? Anybody else kiss themselves in the mirror? <laughs> Die does. Okay. All right, so look at your rationale. Question four. Okay, we have in paragraph four in passage two, what does this sentence mean? So all we have to do is interpret this sentence. And when the winter came upon it, he would still be standing where spring trembles on the verge of summer. Who had A, the lighting illuminating on the painting is influenced by the seasons. B, the changing seasons affect Dorian's attitude about the painting. C, Dorian's body will remain young while the image in the painting ages. D, the seasons will continue to change while the painting remains the same. Okay, this is a level two understanding figurative language. And it is C. The seasons are use, used as a metaphor for aging. Spring is youth, summer is adulthood, fall is middle age, and winter is old age. Dorian is reflecting on the fact that the image will change, but his body will not. So if you had a different one... Um, Make sure you read your rationale for that. I think, was the last one the closest one? Did anybody have the last one, D? Okay, but, okay. yeah, D uh, would be, this is incorrect because um, although the seasons are described as changing, the painting changes too, okay? That's a close one, and they like to throw those ones on that are kind of close that make you go, hmm. Use your strikeout. Uh, key that you can strike off the other ones. Like if you do flag it, make sure you answer it. It's the directions, like I told you, tell you not to answer it and flag it. I say make a guess. Cross off the ones you know or not. Make a guess. Flag it. Go back to it if you have a chance. But at least answer it so you have an option to get a point. Because if not, you can get done and you have to turn it in. You're not going to get a point for that. Okay. And don't spend too much time on a one point question. Don't, don't sit and analyze it for 10 minutes. Okay, is this the same one? No, question five? Okay. Oh, okay, you had to highlight the um, two phrases from the... Um... What? You don't have it? It skipped five? Okay. All right, well, well, we'll go through it. So use your brains. You have to do, um, you have to select two sentences. So this is, since we didn't have that in your um, handout, select two phrases from the excerpts that emphasize the dark mood of passage two. So it's a dark mood. Look for words that are dark, okay? So you had to, in this one, in paragraph three, you would highlight the two sentences. You know, they can, click on it and they highlight, you know, that's what this is. This is only one point, so you have to get them both to get anything, and it's a level three question, so it's one of the higher level questions. Um, so let's look at it. For a moment, he thought of praying that the horrible sympathy that existed between him and the picture might cease. It had changed in an answer to a prayer. Perhaps in an answer to a prayer, it might remain unchanged. 
and yet who that knew anything about life would surrender the chance of remaining always young, however fantastic that chance might be, or with that fatal consequence it might be fraught. In paragraph three, you have to select phrases. Only phrases. Anybody want to make a... The last phrase, what? Or with faithful consequences, it might be fraught. Okay. Anybody else want to make a... Okay. Let's see. Since this one wasn't in here, we'll just look. For a full credit, it says you had to have um, two of the following. So there are three options that you could have chosen. You have to have two. So the horrible sympathy that existed... And we don't know because we can't see what was highlighted, you know. So that was right. Or what faithful consequences, and it might be fraught, okay? Look for, if it says mood, look for the words that create a mood in you. Remember when I um, did tone and mood and I said, like, the tone of voice that I use could put you in a mood? Think of it that way, okay? Tone and mood. All right, scrolling down to the next one. We're going to scroll down to six. So these are all just the possible points that you could get on that question. So here's question six. You have this one, correct? Okay, this is a level two. So one of the easier questions. Um, looks, this is looking for uh, themes, patterns of events, or character types of myths, traditional stories. Uh, so myths are one of those things that you're going to see on the test um, a lot. Okay. How is the painting in passage two similar to the fountain in passage one? So it's either a metaphor or a symbol. We knew that because we had those options. We read the question before we read the passage. It is a metaphor for the changing seasons. It is a metaphor for love and relationships. It is a symbol of the main character's future. Or it is a symbol of the main character's love for himself. So D, you think D? Scroll down here and see. It is right. Make sure you read your rationale if you chose a different one. D, uh, the painting in Wilde's novel functions like the fountain of the Greek myth. It is designed to be a reflection of a character who is consumed with self-love. Okay. Question seven. This is the last for this passage. Um, the next one will be to go along with the other passage and I'm probably going to stop the video and restart a video just for all of you listening right now <laughs> just because I'm almost to my time limit all right so question seven remember a has to be correct for you to get any points for B and if we look at the point breakdown right here this is a two-pointer so if there's an A and a B it's a two-pointer but A is more important than B because if you don't get A you can't get B okay or yeah but if you get B, they do not give you any points for A. They assume that you just accidentally got the right answer if you missed that part, okay? So this is a, a level three question. Whenever there's um, an A and a B, usually it's going to be a three-pointer three, three pointer, um, as far as the cognitive type of question. Um, so this one is analyzing literary text to determine a theme and um, relationship to the character's plot, setting, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So... Part A, important. What is a shared theme of both passages? And reading this question before you read that is something that helps you to find, because you've got four options. You can know as you're reading which one of those would fit. You know, it just makes sense to read these before you read the passage. So what is a shared theme of both passages? A, you cannot escape fate. B, beauty cannot last forever. C, love can be difficult to find. D, appearances can be deceiving. Between A and B, you cannot escape fate. Or beauty cannot last forever. Or D. Did you say B or D? A and B. Balin says D. Anyone say C? All right, these are tricky. These are tricky. Um, and then notice... Make sure you highlight this stuff. I'm telling you, it will help you. So you have to have one of the 